Cattle markets have been strong so far this year, but what can we expect for the rest of 2015? Joining us now to talk about the fall outlook is Troy Applehans with Cattlefax. Troy, cow-calf producers have been enjoying some pretty good returns the last couple of years. What's your prediction for the rest of 2015? Prices aren't going to be as robust as the past couple of years, Kevin. Obviously, uh, we went through 2013 and 14 where prices were, we were in a bull market. And um, obviously, as we go forward here, we feel like the 2015 market is obviously lower than we've seen the past couple of years, particularly for cow-calf producers. Doesn't mean they're still not going to be profitable. Mm -hmm. Very respectable profits are, are expected for this fall time frame. But We've had a we've had a tremendous um, influence through, with the global financial markets at, um, as of late, and there's a lot of moving parts to these markets and how they impact commodity markets and, as well. Typically, we feel like that we're going back into what we would term a normal seasonal type market, so we would expect these calf prices to decrease in value as we move in towards the fall. Now, as we as we progress towards that time frame, we would anticipate that. These financial markets in the global um, outlook will, will kind of settle down, if you will, and we feel like that, we'll, that will give cow-calf producers an opportunity to still try to forward contract these calves prior to the, to the big fall run in the October-November time frame. Let's talk feeders for a moment. They've had a bit of a bumpy ride as of late. Uh, what's your read on uh, what's going on in the fed cattle market? Cattle feeders have lost year-to-date about $100 per head. And as we progress to the end of the year, particularly going into the fourth quarter, we've got some extremely high break-evens out there. Those losses will mount as we go through the end of the year. We're dealing with a couple of different things, Kevin. First and foremost is probably the discount structure that we see to the futures market. Mm -hmm. It's not allowing cattle feeders to lay off any risk and manage risk to, to any degree. They've had to go out there and pay more for cattle than they really wanted to in order to get the inventory, mm -hmm. particularly during, uh, during this tight supply time frame. Mm -hmm. But we feel like that typically as we, as we go through very profitable time periods like cattle feeders saw in 2014, we have to remember they made more money in 2014 than they have in the previous decade combined wow. on a cash to cash basis. Most of the time it takes two to two and a half turns of cattle through a feed yard before they start buying a more acceptable break even. Yeah. I'm not sure it's going to take that long through this one. Gotcha. Let's talk about uh, cow-calf producers and stockers and, and the kind of decisions they have to make as we go through the rest of the fall. What would you recommend to make sure that 2015 wraps up as profitable as possible? Well, I think we've got to be careful, um, particularly on the cow-calf side, for those producers that still feel like that they have some room to expand, to expand their herds, mm -hmm. particularly if, if weather permitting as we go forward in here. These, these bred female prices are, are going to continue to be pretty high, and I think they've got to take a really hard look at do they want to expand their herd at the current price levels that they're at. Mm -hmm. I think that these bred female prices in particular are still going to have the top end for the better ones. Practical range has been 2,500 to 3,000 for the past year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. I feel like that we still have the top side of that, but we'll probably lower the bottom side down into that $2,000 area. Okay. I think we have to, you know, particularly for the margin operators that are in the stocker business, they've got to be careful as well because right. margin operators are going to have a more difficult time making making money going forward uh, mm -hmm. for the next couple of years um, due to the fact that they're having to pay probably more than they really want to for these calves mm -hmm. due to these tight supplies. In terms of the corn market, uh, it seemed like there was some question early on due to the number of acres that simply didn't get planted. But what I've been hearing is it sounds like we're going to have a really good corn crop nationwide. What's your read on what's going to happen in terms of feed grain prices this year? A lot of various opinions out there pertaining to the corn market. We know that the eastern Corn Belt area in particular, they've had some damage out in their fields due to too much water. But so many of these other areas, particularly the, uh, the western Corn Belt and some of these um, areas that typically aren't known for high corn production feel like we're going to have a really good crop. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to get into harvest before. It's kind of one of those crops to prove it to us that it's there. Mm -hmm. I think probably between now and harvest we can see a practical range of 340 to 380 in the corn market. I think we get into harvest and these yields exceed expectations. Obviously we I think we'll have risk lower to around that 3 to 320 area. Mm. And quickly in terms of 2016, what do you see for cattle producers? 
I think we've got to realize, Kevin, that we saw a major peak in terms of market prices in the fall of 2014. Mm -hmm. We're in a lower trending market. We still feel like that this cattle cycle is coming back to us when we're, we're traditionally on this 10 to 12 year cattle cycle. And I think as we go through here, obviously these prices we're gonna, will continue to go lower as we expand the herd. Mm -hmm. Albeit, I feel like that cow-calf producers can still be very profitable for the next several years. Very good. Thank you so much for coming and providing your insights. Glad to be here. Want to keep up on all the latest news in the cattle industry? Just visit NCBA's website at beefusa.org. And for more expert analysis on the cattle markets, be sure to visit cattlefacts.com.